What are the big research challenges in soft robotics? It's really to understand what problem they solve, because we really don't know what they can do yet. The potential for soft robotics is really that it allows you to take a fundamentally new approach to building a robot. So by using apparel, by using soft materials such as silicons, um, you have the potential to make devices and systems that are much, much cheaper than existing robots that are out there in, at the moment in clinics or in, in the field. So a, a pair of pants on their own are not a robot, but as soon as you start to integrate sensors to monitor movement and actuators that can apply force and a microprocessor that can close the loop, then all of a sudden you've got something that essentially is a robot. But I think to have robots really cooperate with and interact closely with people, they have to be safe. By having these devices be soft, the potential to make them kind of inherently safe and have people then be more comfortable around them, I think is one of the big advantages of soft robotics. This field is, is rapidly growing and changing and bringing together you know, materials, design and assembly is going to allow us to create new classes of soft robots that sense and respond to their environment autonomously, that exhibit um, the types of motions and functionality that one sees in biological systems in nature every day. And that's really what's driving the future uh, and motivating the work that we're doing here at Harvard. What excites me the most about the field is probably that I get to come in and, and be just sort of, you know, blue sky creative in terms of the types of devices that we make. Now that we've got all of these capabilities in terms of how we can build things and, uh, you know, the, the different components that we have now some experience with, we can make a huge array of different robots for different applications. There are obviously lots of applications in medicine, but many of the things that are involved in a procedure, let's say retraction, right now they're done with metal forceps. Now actually tissue doesn't like having metal teeth in it. So if you could do it in a more forgiving way, that would be a worthwhile thing to do. We're really focused on how can we apply soft robotics to the area of assistive devices for people with some kind of physical impairment. Um, and the real advantage with soft robotics is that you can develop systems or wearable robotic systems that are very lightweight, very non-restrictive, but can still actually deliver some assistance to the person's limbs. Fukushima was one of my interests. You send a robot into Fukushima, and if it goes into one of the contaminated areas, you don't really want it back in any way the electronics are fried. And so you just spent fifty or hundred thousand dollars to have a non-recoverable object. With a soft robot there are nothing to fry. And you get tired of it and you cut the cord and you don't care. You've just spent, you know, two hundred dollars to do it. Work in, in C's, in the Wies Institute, in FAS, in Harvard in general, has really cultivated the growth of this field at Harvard. The field of soft robotics really does draw on disciplines from, from many different areas. Chemistry and chemical engineering is, is really important, material science, software, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, in our case biomechanics. So one of the nice things about being at Harvard is that really it kind of has all these different parts because of the sort of interdisciplinary nature that already exists in all of these places at Harvard that just really opens the door to people that collaborate across departments, across schools. You know, I'm collaborating with people now that I wouldn't have envisioned 10 years ago when I got here. So that's been extremely fruitful and, and, and really fun, frankly.